Well hello again everyone, welcome to Wagon Wheel Friday. Uh, last Saturday we had four races in which we invested our money, uh, only found success in one of them however, and so our return on investment has dropped down now to 25.3% and our strike rate with 10 out of 23 is now at 43.5%. Profit of $166.64 on an investment of $658 and 45 cents. So at the moment, uh, both of those figures are above what I would expect uh, is the target that we're aiming for. In other words, return on investment of 20% and a strike rate of four out of every 10 races. Now, at the top of the screen is the wagon wheel as I first presented it. Uh, and what I have decided to do because having to continually refer back to this to find the numbers to put into the spreadsheet became quite frustrating and irritating to be perfectly honest. And so I've modified it just a bit so that I was able to program it with some formulas in Excel to do all of the calculations automatically for me. So the first one to notice here is that I've changed the bad barrier numbers from five down to one. Uh, now the new numbers are four down to one. So uh, that will make a difference of one point for some horses. The uh, total position in their last three races, when you add up all their finishing positions, uh, were in bands basically of about three. And what I've done is make sure that each total for the last three runs has its own entry number for the spreadsheet. So if you've got three wins in a row, then you get 30 points. If you've got two wins in a second in your last three starts, you get 29 points. Something like two seconds in a win or two wins in a third will give you 28 and so on. So poorest performance, you know, zero, zero, zero gets you a score of three and then working our way up to a score of 30 still for uh, being the winner of its last three starts. Looking at the weights, you'll notice that in the original here, there was a little bit of inconsistency in these bands in that the 59 to 61 and a half and the 56 to 58 and a half had a range of two and a half kilo. And the next one down only had one and a half. And so I've stretched that down to 53 and then anything below 53 gets um, these numbers for the class ratings. And then I just tidied up the actual error of me typing it in. Uh, should really have been a bigger than 61 and a half here. So I've corrected that. The last thing I've done is to save me the hassle of having to enter 10 and 5 all the time. I've now removed those two numbers from the spreadsheet and just allocated a jockey bonus if I think that the jockey is outstanding. And at the moment, I only have two of them that I would allocate a jockey bonus to. Those jockeys are Jamie Carr and James McDonald with a bonus of two. Uh, and the heavy track bonus would still remain at five, but that would only get allocated to horses uh, that have a clear preference for racing on heavy tracks. So something like um, you know, say having five starts on heavy tracks for three wins and two placings or something like that. Now, it's going to be subjective, uh, but generally speaking, uh, this won't be applied to very many horses at all. Uh, and there will have to be a track rating of 10 uh, for that to be applied. Uh, and then the one at the distance and one on the track is staying the same here. Uh, but I'm just looking at the tab guide and adding the two together if they happen to have both and then filling it in. And so uh, looking at a race that we have had some success in, this is the race that was won by Looks Like Elvis. This is what the new spreadsheet looks like. So the first thing we need to do is we enter in the price for each of the horses in TAB order after you've entered the names, of course. We don't enter anything into this column here where it says bet. This is where the size of the bet will appear if the price over here for the wagon wheel is lower than the available price from TAB or the bookmakers. So we enter the price and you'll notice that it calculates a rank over here. 10 for the lowest price. So you long January at $2.60 gets a price rank of 10. The next one was way to go Paula at 360 got a price rank of nine. 
650 is 8, 8 is 7, and so on. Uh, and don't worry about what's going on over here. It's not until we've finished putting all of the data into the blue cells that any of this uh, is going to be usable. But at the moment, just the uh, price rank. And there's the formula up there if you want to know how to do the price rank. The next thing we enter is the barrier. And again, we now get a barrier rank. And there's the formula up there to fill that in. Now, the formula works in such a way that horses in barriers 1 to 6 will get a rank of 0. Horses in barrier 7 to 12 will get a rank of 1. And horses in barrier 13 to 18 will get a rank of 2. And there are very, very few races where you end up with more than 18 in a field. Uh, the Melbourne Cup is perhaps an example of one there, of course, where there are 24. But for the moment, we're just going to leave it as it is. So it will rank the barriers giving it either a good or a satisfactory or a bad rating. And then putting the two together, the price and barrier is calculated. So looking at this, for example, Yulong January was the favourite. It's coming out of a good barrier, and so therefore it gets 10 points. If you come down to the second favourite, way to go Paula, coming out of a fair barrier, while it gets a price rank of 9 for being the second favourite, um, the barrier ranking is 1, so saying it's a f only a fair barrier, and so it goes only 6 points, 7, 6, uh, if you remember how uh, the table works. And so we're now, having entered these two columns, we are now uh, uh, got a score for the price and barrier. Next, we enter the total of the last three runs, and the formula over here, We'll calculate that. It's just 33 take away um, the total of the last three runs. So Yulong January had form of, I think, 211 or something like that. Had a score of 4. So therefore, its point score for form is 29 and so on. So that is calculated automatically. You don't have to go looking at the table. Next, you enter the weight and the class for the horse. Now here I've got a little bit of work to do, it's just a little bit frustrating uh, that I have to remember to put in a zero for racing in the same class, a plus five if the horse is going down in class, and a negative five here if the horse is going up in class. I am going to work on some coding to enable us to just put in uh, down, up, same in here. Uh, and it will do the calculation for us. But whatever the case, the formula over here is now calculating a weight and class number to fill into that particular space. Don't have to look at the table, just does it automatically. Next, we need to put in our jockey bonus and heavy track. Now, there weren't any for this race. And then lastly, fill in the one on the track and one on the distance total. So Yulong January had one over the distance and on the track, so it got 11. Winning partner looks like Elvis, both had one at the distance, so got eight, but hadn't won on the track. And down here at DiMaggio had neither of those metrics. So having done all that, we are now completed. All of the adjusted totals and everything is worked out over here. And we come up to the result that the only two to back based on these prices, which weren't exactly the starting price for the horses, uh, but at the time that I filled the spreadsheet in, $10.17 would have been the bet on looks like Elvis at $8. I think it actually started at $8.50. Wagon Wheel priced it at $4.92. And then you would have had $3.94, perhaps round that off at $4, uh, because the Wagon Wheel priced dropped the mic at $12.69, and we could have got $61 about it. All the rest of them were poorly priced. Now, Probably the obvious question is, well, with your tinkering around here, John, how much have you messed up uh, the numbers to the extent that we're now not going to get the results that I've uh, described at the very beginning of the video? Well, here's the original wagon wheel numbers for the race. Uh, we had Yulong January at $3.81 and working our way down through here. Once I've messed around with it so that I've automated it, the prices are different, but not massively different. Uh, rather than coming out with an NA, it comes out with a price of a thousand to one uh, about a horse that the wagon wheel thinks has no hope of winning. Uh, but whatever the case, you can see here 
the OK Turbo, there was a, a difference there of $2 in the price. Uh, so yeah, it's not going to be exactly the same, uh, but it does the job. And I can confirm that the performance actually has been unaffected. Uh, every race that I've checked this out on, it still comes up with the same selections being valid investments and got better functionality because everything is just automated and I don't have to keep going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and checking. So it's less likely that we're going to be making a mistake um, trying to go uh, from screen to screen, I think. But it was interesting to see that the performance had been unaffected. And as I was checking through it, I did notice that very, very few horses that are up in class actually ever win the race. Uh, so because I'm focusing on what I believe are high quality races, then the quality horses that are either running in the same class or coming down in class seem to be the ones that are winning the races. So I think out of the 23 races we've had, 20 of them have been won by horses that are either racing in the same class or down in class. Now, I was asked, uh, what are my race selection criteria? So here we go. We're looking, or at least I am anyway, for races that are longer than 1,200 metres. And the reason for that is that often in races that are shorter than 1,200 or 1,200, say, you often get quite a few horses that are racing first up. And they might have had very good form at the end of their last preparation, but there's no way of telling whether they're going to be primed for a first up tilt. Uh, and so by concentrating on races more than 1,200 metres, uh, that tends to eliminate that a little bit. But if there was a race, say, over 1,400 metres and there were six horses first up, I wouldn't be betting in it. We're looking for races which are open class or better. And we're also looking for races where the prize money is greater than usual. So they're the metrics that I'm using in my race selections. And so this week, using those metrics, I've selected five races that I think the wagon has some sort of a chance of finding the winner for us. And so the first of those races is at Eagle Farm race number four, a very small field uh, and a short price favorite here, $2.30 about Wapiti. The wagon does come out with it as the favourite at $3.43, but there are a couple of other horses that are not that far away from it. And so we've got three bets, according to the wagon, based on uh, the current pricing. Uh, we're going to have $10.79 on Tears of Love at $5, just above the wagon price. $12 or so on Fast Net Cyclone at $6.50, just above $4.15. And then a rank outsider here that somehow sneaks in. And so around about $3 we'd be having on that one. So that's Eagle Farm race four. Now, of course, if there are scratchings or if the prices change in the morning, then the numbers, of course, will have to be changed. So just bear that in mind. Eagle Farm race five is the next race. There's a very short price favorite here, Gypsy Goddess at $1.30. But the wagon price is at $1.59. But it does say there's one other chance that might be able to beat it, a horse called Kabosh. Now, because there's only one that's come up, I'm not going to be laying Gypsy Goddess like I did the last couple of times where there was an odds on favourite. And that was because we had four or five horses that we were needing to back. In this case, we'll just have the $8.50 odd on Kabosh. Eagle Farm Race 8. Uh, this race is a very wide betting race, running the wagon over it. It only comes up with two at a price that you want to consider betting on. Chapter and verse. Wagon rates it at $9.40. We can get 16s currently. And then stamp. Wagon rates it at $4.12. We can get $6 on that. So $17 odd we're betting on that race. Then moving over to Ascot, race three. Uh, another very short price favourite, Regal Power. It's the horse that uh, powered home to beat the odds on favourite for us. Uh, a couple of weeks ago but again there's only one horse that the wagon suggests has any chance whatsoever of beating uh, the favorite and that's nerf bosk uh, the wagon rates it at just about four dollars and we can get six dollars about it so twelve dollars fifty on that one and then the last race another wide betting race and this time the wagon comes up with four potential bets based on uh, the prices so they're the bets for this week 
The spreadsheet is downloadable from Google Sheets and I will link that and the download instructions in the video description. And so you will be able to access that. Please don't send me an email saying that you want to get access for it. It should all work perfectly well if you follow those download instructions. Uh, at least I hope they do anyway. Uh, but I can't really risk making it available for people to edit. Uh, because then uh, having you know possibly messed it up that means the next person who wants to download it is going to be downloading something uh, that is not the way I want it to be. Uh, that's it for this week. Happy and successful punning to all of you on what I hope will be a profitable day tomorrow.